Hey everybody, Oliver Joyce from Whiskey Barrel Studios here and welcome to episode 7 of the Spartacus Game Developer Journeys. 7 means we're actually almost 2 months in and that's kind of scary because I've given myself roughly 6 months, maybe a little longer to get this thing done and dusted and it's probably going to go past that but um, this isn't a year long project or a 2 year project or anything like that. Um, it's a project in which I teach myself unity and get a good game out in the process. Um, Although there were seven weeks in, I did take a tiny bit of time off to work on another secret project, which I'll be announcing very shortly, which will be available for everybody. Uh, a few people know about already, but for the rest of you, it should come as a pleasant surprise. But this week in Spartacus development, I've been working on refining the game a little bit, um, really just enhancing how the player interacts with substances like water. Um, I've added some new um, shooting traps into the game. They're, they're just starting to take effect. Um, they're, they're pretty cool and quite deadly. Um, and the main thing I've been working on is really refining the dynamic lighting, the smart lighting, if you will. And that is going to be demoed today. And you'll just see how much of an impact that makes on the game and changes the atmosphere from, you know, not quite bright, but, um, you know, it really feels gloomy and uh, full of despair and, and suspense now with this new lighting. I think you'll enjoy it. All right, let's jump over to Unity and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here we are over here in Unity right now and the game is currently unlit. It's just using straight up regular Unity lighting. But what I've actually implemented in the game is an awesome plugin called Smart Lighting 2D from a guy called Simonis. And he's a fantastic developer who currently works at uh, CD Projekt Red, um, the guys behind Witcher. And he is a smart guy and he's developed this fantastic lighting, 2D lighting system for Unity. Um, and I've been, you know, working with him to add improvements and so on and suggestions. And he is so good at getting back to you. And I highly recommend if you're looking for a 2D lighting solution, his has been fantastic and the Discord community is great. So yeah, Smart Lighting 2D is what I'm using. Now, currently it's not turned on, but let's remove that. Ah, there it is, it looks amazing. No, no, no. What you don't see is this. Right here is a torch that has a light source 2D in it. So if we now click on the torch, wall torch, wall torches, wall torch, open, we have um, a 2D light source. And over here, I've got all these different um, parameters I can change. I can change the color of the light to all these different things. Um, I can change how bright the light is, the size of the radius of the output of the light, the additive, which is just, you know, creates a different effect and makes it really sort of feel brighter or duller. Uh, like very much the Photoshop sort of different filters, like, you know, screen overlay, that kind of thing, if you've ever used Photoshop. Um, different parameters we can muck around with. And I've also created my own custom light flicker script, which basically adds a little um, flicker to the light just to, you know, make it feel like a real torchlight. Let's have a look at this in the game. Firstly, right there is our actual uh, lighting mask. You can see it's actually a time-lapse mask that the windows aren't affected by it. So when you walk past the moonlit window, you're in full moonlight when you're away from it you're in shadow and that's a pretty cool feature so firstly the game without light looks like this very much like an old school um game that you'd see from the playstation one or something like that before they had dynamic lighting of course the particles look very fancy and modern and they're pretty spectacular let's zoom in a bit but Let's turn on that lighting now. It's dark. You can see the window there. That's what I'm talking about. I actually need to re... Now hang on. Run it. Just, there we go. Reinitialize. Run. Okay. Here it is in all its glory. As you go near the torch, everything is brighter and the torch has its own glow. As we go away from it, everything's dark and gloomy. You can see up there, there's a torch light up there, which is flickering. The windows have their own uh, moonlight. 
and you can actually see the moon right in the distance there. It creates a really cool effect, but everything is kind of really dark and scary. And when I uh, run the build version of this later in the video, you'll see how cool this actually looks uh, when it's compiled. This, of course, in edit mode, doesn't look half as good, but it's still pretty spectacular. And you can see a guard over there walking in the moonlight. Um, the next addition to the smart lighting, which is the monus the developer is working on, will be adding um, projection shadows. So our little Spartax character's shadow will be on the wall behind him, like a drop shadow. Isn't that awesome? I love it. So as he comes here, you'll see, see him in the moonlight, and then back to there. So you get some nasty surprises if you're not careful. If you're running along in the dark, it ain't great. And what this actually means is that things like bullets and that kind of thing can... Um, affect you so uh, bullets can have uh, little glows and you know blue glows green glows green glows as they shoot uh, and that's really cool it's something that you see a lot in terraria which has the dynamic lighting and all the different stuff like that and that really inspired me to put that in the game like this so that's the first major edition of the game and that's been in place for three or four weeks but i really have been tinkering it and i wanted to show it off properly in a reveal because it really does change how the game looks and feels Second thing I want to show, if you grab our debug spawn point, the spawn point is basically uh, something I can set in the game and, you know, it does what it says. It, it spawns the player when it's in debug mode, wherever you want it to be. So let's spawn him over here near this body of water. And I wanted to talk to you today about water in games. Um, I've never been a huge fan of how in platform games uh, water actually behaves. Swimming just kind of isn't fun in most platform games. You can do it really well, but it's so hard to do. And only the very top-notch developers get it right. And I'd been tinkering with it for, for a while, and I just couldn't get it to be, feel fun. And so I've been reading this book called Level Up. Level Up. So if you have a look, if you go full screen, there it is. Yeah. Scott Rogers, Level Up, the Guide to Great Video Game Design. This is, hello, it's me. <laughs> um, that's a, It's an awesome book that um, a fellow developer, John Stayskull, my very good friend and colleague um, who's developing Blood and Mead. Um, anyway, I'll tell you about that in a future video, but that book's awesome. But he recommended this book to me, and this is the first game design book that's had really practical advice. So many game design books are all about... Um, quite philosophical ideas on making games fun and that kind of thing uh, and you know very top level ideas but this actually tells you things like here's how high um a player should be able to jump you know on this far and if you're standing the edge this is how you know the really practical bits of advice and one of the things he mentioned was if you're struggling with something uh don't be afraid to take it out if it doesn't feel fun right away don't try and force it because just keep removing things until it's fun or until you've got nothing, you know what I mean? Um, so rather than tinkering with the, with the water for months and months and months, what I've decided to do is I spent yesterday working on the physical properties of it. Um, and now if we go to the water here, what it has is it has a um, physics volume on it, which has a gravity, has a four multiplier, different things that affect how it feels when you're in the water. Your player can't swim in the water. He can move. He can move down. And if he finds a ledge or something, he can jump back up. But he can't swim. He's wearing heavy armor and a sword and everything. And so it stands to reason that he uh, would sink to the bottom. Also, he's an ancient gladiator. He probably doesn't know how to swim. So let's show you how that actually behaves in the game. We've got a few other scripts on there, like a jump override, which basically says you can jump and that's... You have a jump multiplier as you go through the water, but you really need to be touching a ledge or uh, the ground for that to take effect. So here we are by the water. If I just jump straight in, you'll notice he'll hit the water, splash for a bit, and then sink straight down. And when you reach the bottom of the level, you die. Splash down into a watery grave. And there's something kind of eerie about that going through the black depths. And I have what's called the lassophobia, a mild version of the lassophobia, which is, you know, fear of the deep. And I'm sure a lot of people have that. There's even a great Reddit sub about the, the lassophobia. It's a hard one to say. And if you go on there, you can see, you know, people diving into deep caverns and that kind of thing. And that has really inspired me to, there's going to be water in this game, but it's going to be dark and scary. There may be things lurking in there. 
but you're not going to be having huge swimming sections like where you kind of swim like Super Mario or something because that just it doesn't work in this game. But what we can do is, so I'll jump again off that. Oh, into the water dead. You might have seen a ledge there. So what we're going to do is we're going to spawn on the other side of the water. I don't want you to be completely helpless in the water because I want to have it so maybe there's secrets to find in the water. Um, there is maybe like a chest hidden on a ledge or something like that. If you're very brave and very experimental, maybe you'll find there should be secrets in games like this, you know, for replayability. All right, so what we can do, jump off the water, hit a ledge. I worked hard on adding some kind of bubbles as well. So when he's in the water, you can see these bubbles. Um, I still need to constrain them to the uh, water volume plane, and I haven't quite figured out how to do that in Unity. I know it's possible. We can grab one of the wall, and you can jump off the wall as well. But there's a way to do a wall jump like that. Well, obviously that those particles are meant to stay in the water, but it's quite a nice effect. So you can move around, but you're not swimming. You're not like, so I can't keep jumping, jumping, jumping. But we can jump enough to get out of the water with a wall jump. Well, I think we can anyway. Try it one more time. Jump. There we go, out of the water. Oh, and in again. <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to perfect it. It's not quite there yet. And I also will constrain the water particles so the bubbles don't appear above the water because that would look weird. Let's jump over to the other thing I wanted to show you, the fire traps. And these are cool additions. First of all, I'll turn off my dart traps because I'll show you them after. With the addition of the dynamic lighting to the game, fire traps are a cool um, feature. So we're standing here um, and what these things do are there are a burst of flame, a jet from the ground, and you got to get past them. They were on a timer. So get through our portcullis. There is our flame jet. You can see a little dynamic light appears as a warning, then the jet. So if I stand on it, you get hurt by the flames. We don't want that. Um, and I'll, you know, tinker with how much damage the flames actually do to you. They don't stop your movement, but you need know, you three or four of those in a row. And there'll be ways to turn them off via triggers and that kind of thing, like these little platform triggers. There's a little spike trigger there. Spikes operate on timers now as well, that's new. So you can, spikes, two seconds to run past that. So if I do that, run past, run past, run past. Little platform there. And the other thing I wanted to show you that I was working on yesterday are, I'm calling them dart traps, but they're actually, you know, shooting obstacles. They're not just darts, they are bullets and things like that. And these are going to be able to spawn in various directions, shoot things at you, shoot things in, you know, round around or in eight directions, that kind of thing. At the moment, they only shoot to the left because I haven't figured out the rest yet. But you'll see now as we go past the spike trap, these two skulls, and they're being shot by these two evil spike traps over here. You can see the glowing eyes. These have a little light source 2d on them so they've got a dynamic light and a little particle system on them i haven't finished them off so when they hit the wall they're gonna have a little tsk, little fizz and disappear but if you touch one bam you get hurt touch it again dead tsk. respawn there past that past the flame trap past those you can actually see them in action and they'll actually, they're not supposed to spawn from there. They're supposed to spawn from the, the mouth, but that'll happen soon. I only started working on them yesterday afternoon, so they're in their infancy. But I imagine by the next video, you'll see these things that can shoot in various combinations. And they'll be able to shoot fireballs and lightning and these floating evil skulls. You know, probably not historically accurate, but, you know, it's a game. And up here, you can see just a little moving platform, a uh, one-way platform, sorry, and some water to drown in. Let's have a look at this in build mode and you can just see how the game actually looks when um, it has a dynamic lighting and it's running the way it should. So let's 
compile it now and we'll do that several hours later here it is I actually paused it while I compile because it, it takes a little bit of time all right so here's Spartacus with the dynamic lighting on how cool does that look um, you notice he has a glow around him that is his sort of field of vision and I can sort of tinker with that to make it show more or less of the level this is what I'm happy with at the moment but that might change depending on you know user feedback you can see the torches glow over in the distance and as you get close to them everything's brighter and of course the moonlit windows create a lot of atmosphere and what this means is when you're running past things you got to be careful that you don't just jump onto a spike in the dark because of my heads here let's just hide me for a second goodbye oh where am I there you go so you can see the full game. Right, back here. Bam. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. You can knock them onto the, the razor. Weirdly enough, though, when you kill them onto the razor traps, you die as well. It's a little bug that I need to um, work out. I know why it is. It says if um, anything touches the razor traps and dies, um, they can kill the player. Um, his little body is twitching there, which is kind of funny. What I've made it in the game is that anyone who, um, any enemy can be affected by the same traps you are. So you can push them onto spikes, um, they get affected by bullets, razors, all that kind of thing, which make, make for some fun dynamic style of gameplay. Let's jump up now. All right. Onto the crumbling blocks. Onto the third one. To the moving block circular saw and that's a one hit kill so well well all right dodge that as you can see this may be quite a challenging platformer when all is said and done this is just my test level but i'm going to be designing some fiendish levels so that is our fire trap you can duck down you don't need to duck at the moment but some bullets you'll need to you know that can hurt us Pass the spike traps on a timer. Watch out for that. Those guys only fire to the left, so we're safe from them. We'll climb up the ladder past the one-way platform onto a crumbling block. And we can sink down and right back to the start. Oh, that's back to our checkpoint. There probably won't be checkpoints in the game, I don't think, because levels won't be long enough to have checkpoints. Anyway, there we have it. Let's... Hang on. Close Spartacus. All right. Yeah, the uh, video always acts up when I'm running Spartacus and running the video. So there we have it. Uh, developer Update 7. It's a big one. You know, dynamic lighting is no small thing and it adds a ton to the game. All right. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you. I always wonder where I put my head when there's that thing there. It's like, oh, you can't see me. I can't see you either. All right, probably too much coffee for one morning. I'll see you soon in the next video. Thank you for watching and uh, bye for now.